A Bug's Life was, I think, the combination of the hardest movie we worked on and the most fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's funny. I have both those sort of knee-jerk responses yeah. when I think about the time period of that. It's like, it may not have literally been the hardest thing we've worked on, but it felt like the hardest thing I've well, ever it, worked on. Well, the story was so gigantic. It was too big. It was, right? it right. was like going from freshman class of how to make a movie Toy Story to senior thesis. Yeah. It right. was just this huge Well, and it did have every complication though, right? It had cast of thousands, widescreen, uneven ground plane. Organic, <laughs> organic, 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 everything. organic, organic translucency. translucency, and a lot of sets, because there was a lot, a of, lot of places that they went. Yeah. Yeah. Remember how you didn't want to tell the ending to the TDs, because they'd freak out because there was fire and smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and plus, we, I, I don't know, we, I think we felt the future of the studio was resting and on the, it. We had gone public. public. Right. We had gone public. This is our mm -hmm. first movie being public. It was our second film, and there is like, there's a history of One Hit Wonders where their second album, their second film, right. this hasn't worked. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was like, hey, John. Yeah. No pressure, but but the whole company and all your stockholders are riding on yeah. this. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure, Scott. Big light. It was the last time that we were kind of one company working on one picture. It's when yeah. also the whole animation department really gelled as a, mm -hmm. a group. Yeah. But it was so much fun back then. Do you remember the first version of the story? There was well, the, the, the main character was, was named Red. It was yep. a red ant. He was not part of the colony. He was right. part of the circus troupe. Right. He was the ringmaster. And he was desperate to try to find work for these guys. And Flick and Grub from the colony came up trying to hire uh, some bugs, warrior bugs. But we just kept running into problems with him being the main character. You know, because he could leave at any time mm -hmm. and it was okay. Right. Well, what had happened you know, is you, we problems. had been banging our head against that for maybe a year, year and a half. Yeah. And you'd come back from the opening of The Rock. That's right. And you came in and said, you can think whatever you want about the movie, but Nicolas Cage, he's such a winning main character and we don't have that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. a couple months earlier, I had started to sense that it wasn't working, but I was afraid to say what I was thinking. What if the guys that went and got the circus bugs, one of those ants, it was his movie? Because then it's their family. They can't leave the problem they've created. You, so you're the one that kind of taught me that and taught all of us that about Edu. What if? And you throw out this crazy idea. What if Toy Story started where they fall out of the van on yeah. the gas station? Right. <gasps> Andy! It throws your thinking into a place you can't get it any other way. And oftentimes, you don't go with that idea, but it has changed your thinking, and now it breaks you through that. And so I said, well, what if Flick was the guy that went and made the mistake of getting the wrong people? Right. So I just started writing that scenario. And just thought, I said, I'm going to just write this to myself until it doesn't work. You know, is that going to be on page 5, page 10? I think I got like 30 pages in or something. And so when you came in that morning and said, uh, I have to admit, guys, I just, I've just i seen what our problem is. I said, all right, yeah. I have this script. <laughs> Boom, and I put it down. <laughs> it was like 30, Big 35 wedding. pages. Yeah. And you read it? Yeah, it made me look yeah. like a genius. But, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, about that proposition, I'm looking for tough warrior bugs. Stand back. We are the greatest warriors in all bugdom. Hi -ya! And then they scream, ah, a bee. And in comes high, I'm like, I'm a cute little bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, in every movie, he would see something early on in the script or an mm -hmm. idea, and he'd go, oh, that seems fun, and he would take it by himself and go storyboard it out. And inevitably, you know, whatever he did that first stayed nearly intact into the, the movie all the way. Children's he did the children's play where all the circus bugs find out they're supposed to be warriors yeah. and kill all these grasshoppers. Yeah. And then, oh, we have drawn a few bugs helping us fight the grasshoppers away. Oh, look at the beautiful colors of the blood. We drew one of you dying because our teacher said it would be more dramatic. And it was so hilarious what he did. You know, I die, <laughs> die, <laughs> die. <laughs> well, then there was Fleeby. Oh, yeah, Fleeby. The story of Fleeby was... It was Christmas of 96. That's right. And so Disney was having a big satellite 
meeting where they were linking up their studios in Glendale, studio uh, Florida, and Paris. <laughs> right. He wanted us to give them something. And so you, me, Pete, and Joe, and Lee, yep. we just filmed stuff. We all split up and did all, all sorts of, of different stuff. And Joe always did the dubbing of like a Hong Kong movie. You know, the way he did that was so funny. And he said, oh, it's okay. Just Joe will, will do my voice for me. Yeah. Right? So I just stood there and went, Hello, my name is John Lasseter. Hello, my name is John Lasseter. You may remember me as the director of Toy Story. Nell <laughs> <laughs> yeah. McBeath had, had that great puppet that, that as you opened the mouth, it had this light sensor and it made this great, ah, ah, kind of weird noise. And so we nicknamed it Fleeby. Fleeby, come down here, Fleeby. My dear friend Fleeby, how are you this fine morning? Why, certainly, go right ahead and show our esteemed Tri Studio satellite uplink friends around the new production of Buzz. And then Lee just walked through the whole studio, <laughs> and he did the worst chroma key. Hey, drum, look, it's Fleeby! Hello, Fleeby! <laughs> Would you like to see some delicious preliminary animation tests? And we did that thing where we put the camera on the side. On a project such as Bugs, eventually our crew is able to think and act as if they too were insects themselves. It, it took us like a day and a half to make this thing, and then we shipped it. You gotta remember, they were showing all these other movies with these really big, serious. serious, fancy presentations, and we were at the very end. You know, Lindsay exactly. works here now because of that. She yeah. was working at Disney, my producer, Lindsay Collins, and she saw that after all these slick, slick presentations. She goes, I want to work with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodbye, Fleeby. <laughs> and we had amazing casting mm -hmm. on this movie, amazing actors. Put your trust in the mysteries that are beyond the mere mortal comprehension. Jonathan Harris. <laughs> Jonathan Harris was great because, you know, I grew up with him on Lost in Space on TV, and that blew me away more than meeting a big star at the current time because mm -hmm. there's something about meeting somebody that you've just seen every day in your living room as a, as a kid for years. Remember all his amazing stories of acting on Broadway <laughs> who, who and stuff? Who still owes him a dollar? Marlon Brando. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Marlon Brando owes me a dollar. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go off to tell this great story. He was the best storyteller. For some reason, I had to stay up at Pixar, right. and you guys got to record with him for the first time, yeah. and I was so frustrated. And then suddenly my phone rings in my cubicle, and I pick it up, and it goes, hello, is this Andrew Stanton? <laughs> Didn't and they go, have... oh my gosh, it's you. And he goes, yes, it is, yes, it is. I go, I I'm regressing talking to you. <laughs> He's regressing. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was the best phone call ever. Well, we had dinner over at Phyllis Diller's house. They come, they eat, they leave. That's our lot in life. It's not a lot, but it's our life. <laughs> <laughs> she toured us all around the house. She lived there by so herself. She had that one room for her, her gowns, one room for the wigs, one room for the shoes. But then we went into the room that had the card files. She had a bit, like and a all of her cards. jokes yeah. were yeah. like on library card files. And that was so much fun. We stood there, the four of us, yeah. and we'd phone through her and handed her a joke. And she'd sit there and she'd read it yeah. like she would. And then and with that great laugh. <laughs> I remember how she, if you turn the card over, it it's told it who she bought the joke from and how and much she, she paid, paid for it. it. Every it joke she had. It was awesome. fascinating. I'm a royal aunt and I can't even fly yet. I'm too little. The amazing young actress who did Princess Dot, Hayden and it's here. She was the most professional, what, she's eight amazing. or nine? Yeah. I'm not at the least bit shy. That's for sure. Mm. There was one part where John was talking to her. This whole circus troupe is flying away from you, and you're Bye. saying, Bye! We'll miss you. Bye, come back and see us. Bye, Those... come and see us next year. Yeah. I think next season. <laughs> and she's standing there with a the pencil. <laughs> and John went, oh, OK, OK. And it's, and you know, she remember she you, didn't have to, you didn't have to direct her at all. the very last line there. OK. I, I don't need it. I can just say it. It's impossible to look back with a trained eye and ear now. And you just go, wow, by, by talent or luck, we got some great people. Well, well, remember, we were in a casting session. It was down at Disney. I'll never forget sitting next to you. And we were reading Dave Foley for some other part. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we were big fans of Kids in the Hall. He was and so he, excited. He was so excited because yeah. he loved Toy Story so much and stuff. And he started reading. Thank you, Your Highness. Oh, sure. I'd like to take credit for all of this, but that, that wouldn't be right. Because Andrew and I wrote notes to each other as he was reading. Uh, yeah, I said flick. 
And then, I mean, he was expecting a smaller part, and then we came to him and said we would like you to do I think he the main at first. I know. The main character, yes. right? So cute. You have got to help me. Give me some time, I'll come up with a plan. Just go tell him the truth. Joe Ramp they was one of like they Andrew, they Pete, Joe. They're they're like kings of, of the scratch recording. You guys did nearly all the voices, mm -hmm. and Joe did so many voices. Joe and was the, the king. He was so good at it. I mean, cute little bumblebee, and then he starts with... One of my favorites, of course, so was Heimlich. Here, co here I come, flitting through the meadow. Right. And jo <laughs> Joe started doing the, the, doing the voice, and it always made us laugh hysterically, right? <laughs> Slow down, you flowers! <laughs> <laughs> okay. We then hired this one actor that was really quite funny. We thought, oh, he's really funny. And we had a screening. And I took, I always take a version home to show my family. And I remember my wife, Nancy, sitting watching it. And every single time Joe was doing the voice of Jaime, she was sitting there giggling because we had it half and half. Right. And the other guy was doing it, she wasn't laughing. And I just observed that, and I came in the next day and said, Joe, you've got the part. I am a cute little bumblebee. Leave them alone. They have poo-poo hands. Baba, all gone. Baby wants pie. Joe just constantly made us laugh on this movie. He was just so great. Heart and soul. Literally. Yeah, you bet. Heart and soul in the movie. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> Traveling was fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> on on a t a t a Toy Story, we started out at the Burbank Hilton, <laughs> right? And the sharing, sharing, sharing room. That was short lived. And then we went to the Ritz Carlton in Pasadena, right? Whoop. To stay there. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> and then um, the Mondrian, the so Inschrager Hotel on Sunset Boulevard with Philippe Stark doing the thing had just, just opened, opened. And you had read it in a magazine or heard about Fairly it fair. and said, <laughs> we, are, <laughs> and we, are, <laughs> we are going. There and so we went there, and I swear it's like the the bumpkins from the country pulling in, <laughs> and the and the, the in valley, tourist rent a car, and, and, yeah. and the va the valley parkers are in their Armani suits, and we'll get to the Mont yeah. Blanc. Oh, I know. What, well, also what happened is that Joe had <laughs> Joe had <laughs> had promised that as soon as the story department sent off the last story sequence, he was going to shave his head. And he did. Oh, and we were oh, pulling in to the Mondrian oh. Hotel. And I said, Joe, put in your teeth. <laughs> Amen, brothers. <laughs> Joe had this set of fake teeth that looked like a hillbilly. Really? And he reached down and he put in his teeth. And he pulls in to the, the Mondrian Hotel. And the Armani suit, you know, valet comes up. Hello, welcome to the Mondrian Hotel. <laughs> and Joe sticks his head out and goes, is this the mundane hotel? <laughs> like that. And the guy wouldn't let him out of the car. <laughs> and he said, excuse me, sir, do you have a reservation? Yeah, my name's Eisner, Chucky Eisner. My <laughs> uncle's going to let me make a movie. <laughs> and he gets out, and he stands up really tall, and this guy looks up at him, and he goes, the Mondarian Hotel! And he just walks in. And he kept the And he on stayed him. in character and all the way through in. checking in. But I think the best of all the gags that were, were, were played on was when we went to New York. And it was one of the oh, times shoot. that you didn't get to go, right? Because it was... We had gone once before. I'd made Kevin get up at 5 in the morning because I'm a big Today Show fan. And we, went, we <laughs> wanted right. to be outside to the Today Show in the crowd. And yeah. I thought it was You watch cool. it every morning. And, yeah. then you, and you asked if I wanted to go. I said, no. no. And I had a blast. But then the next time you go to New York, I couldn't go. You right? couldn't go. Yeah. So we had color Xeroxes of Andrew's face. The, the right size, you know, and they had them put on sticks. And, you know, it's really hard to get yourself on the Today Show outside the thing, but it's really easy to reach through the crowd and put <laughs> someone else's face. Stick it up above. Yeah, what's your name? Where are you from? Roxana from Merrimack. Okay, now. And poor, like, Al Roker, everybody was like... Al Roker he comes up to interview someone. All of a sudden, these, these <laughs> faces come up right, right next to them and they're wiggling, and there's nothing they can do about it. And, of course, they have the set covering the glass so no one can reach in there. But boy, you can reach above the set. You're doing that exercise and, and I said, and, and I said, oh, just turn it slightly. And it caught the sunlight. And it was so bright in the so studio. Mean. And they're blinking. <laughs> and because of the time difference, I get this you know, crack of dawn call before it's going to start. And anyway, I said, we got down there. I think we got on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not yeah. sure. And I think we got so on. I, I remember sitting there. I'm kind of tired. I haven't changed yet or anything. And I'm watching the Today Show. And I'm looking in the crowd for him. And then I see myself. No, was it, was it Ben? 
your son, didn't he? Yeah, you he told goes, us. Was he that said, what it was? Yeah. He said, he goes, Daddy, there it is. Yeah, no, there that's are. right. I'm sorry. I'm forgetting the story. Because Daddy, that's you. And I go, no, 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 and no. Goes, and there. And then, <laughs> then I saw him. Like, and I remember then just going, oh, no. And my mind started racing. And sure enough, then I'm showing up everywhere. And I am <laughs> screaming at the top of my lungs, swearing <laughs> your guys' names in my living room, going, no. <laughs> and for the next two hours, I just showed up everywhere. Oh, that was so good. It was hysterical. <laughs> and, and, and it prompted me to then, you know, get real payback, at least with Darla and Nemo. <gasps> Darla! <laughs> <laughs> well, should we give the topper story that, sure, that happened to the movie? Well, um, I don't know how it started. You probably know how. One of you guys knows how it started. I remember just getting the call, like, how would you like to... So, show the movie to the president so, of the United um, States. Yeah. We got this call from Steve Jobs saying that we have been invited to Washington to show A Bug's Life, and this is like a couple weeks before it came out, to the president and the first lady. And he said, I really want to show it in the theater at the White House, but it's down for repairs, and they want us to come to, to Camp David for the weekend. And I'm going... And <laughs> like, yeah, you have a problem with what? Uh, this Would statement. you be okay with going to Camp David? Or, yeah. On a private jet. So we all got, got on a, a private jet, and it was like it was Jurassic Park kind of ser security, <laughs> kind of getting in there. One, <laughs> one car at a time went through the yeah. kill zone, yeah, right, yeah, to yeah. get in there. But once you were inside, you were free to go anywhere. And it's literally like a camp. It's just if you were to go to a family summer camp. The yeah, it's ball, really, cabins, it's really modest. But we were, I was staying in the same... Uh, kind of two-bedroom cabin with Steve and Lorene, his wife, and we were in the cabin that Anwar Sadat stayed in for the, the Peace David Accord. And, and the guest book is like... Yeah, there's a guest book for each cabin. Oh, my goodness. One of my favorite moments is that at, we're having the cocktail party. We're all standing around for quite a while. We're just, like, you know, gabbing and stuff. And right in the middle of it, John goes, do you remember what you said? Yeah, I said, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I said that in front of the president of the United States, and he goes, I know, isn't it? <laughs> There's a picture of, of Clinton talking to you and me, and I swear, Kevin, you look like this. I know. <laughs> My best and worst remembrances. I remember shaking his hand going, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, how long have I been holding his hand? Oh, thank you. I was sitting kind of far back when they were showing the movie and the secret, there was a secret serviceman next to me and he was trying so hard not to laugh because it was he was on duty and so he'd be just going <laughs> you know, like the whole movie. It was great. I was really proud of the movie. I was proud of everybody kind of watching it there, you know. Boy, that it was, was really cool. <laughs> it was really cool. <laughs> that was really cool. Yeah. yeah Talk about once David. in a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The next morning, we get this great private tour of the White House and the Oval Office. Then we had to get rushed outside by the Rose Garden to be able to watch them come out of the helicopter. And I remember they got halfway across the lawn, and he suddenly looks over and recognizes us and went, Hey! <laughs> <laughs> and then he went in, and that would, then we had to rush in a car and go back. And yeah. within less than 48 hours, suddenly I was back in my living room, and that was just the most surreal 48 hours I've ever had in my life. But that was, a, that was an amazing way to end the whole journey of the movie. Yeah. 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 My gosh. It was. So years later, when Incredibles was coming out, That's... the teaser trailer said from the makers of Toy Story, Monsters Incorporated, and Finding Nemo. There's a lot of the animators that, that came and started on A Bug's Life. A lot of the leadership of the company right. uh, in general. Yeah. And they were so upset it's very slighted, yeah. <laughs> to see that A Bug's Life was left off this list. Right. So they started bringing in posters and started wearing the shirts and the jackets. And it started this impromptu Bug's Life Appreciation Week. Right. But then the great finale on Friday was going to be a dramatic reading <laughs> from the script of A Bug's Life. Mm -hmm. And Joe, of course, did, did Heimlich. Right. Someday I'll be a beautiful butterfly and then everything will be better. <laughs> and Darla got Dave Foley on the phone doing the voice of Flick. <laughs> And then it started as an annual event. It's an annual event now. I give you flaming death. Yeah. Ready. Ready? Say final. Final. Oh, we we just final. We just filed the last model on a bug's life. Yay! Yeah. Yeah.
I just remember laughing all the time. We just laughed and laughed. I mean, whether it was a recording it's session so or in the car, we just laughed. It's funny, yeah. It's, I know I said it before, but it was one of the funnest productions I ever had, but also one of the hardest movies yeah. mm -hmm. I ever had to work on. So it's right. depending on what the issue is, yeah. I either have really hard memories about it or I have really hysterical memories. But it was really extreme in that sense. I don't yeah. think I've ever had that much laughing and that much pain simultaneously <laughs> yeah. each day. It's true. You know? Me too. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I think it has one of my favorite sequences in all of our films is when Flick um, flies. Oh. There's yeah. something about that in widescreen. That scene is the epitome of what we were always striving mm -hmm. for in the movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could argue whether or not we hit it all the time, but that was the movie we were going for. That was it, right there, that scene. And, and I, I was very proud of that. 